conducted at your military service academies routinely show that academic merit, specifically standardized test scores, highly correlate to GPA, order of merit at graduation, and even success as an officer. However, Admiral Buck, the Naval Academy is the only service academy that still does not require standardized test scores on their applications, citing, quote, barriers caused by COVID-19 and likewise the disruptions for students who plan to apply for admission. Can you explain how the U.S. Naval Academy currently faces barriers caused by COVID-19 that the two other service academies do not? Yes, ma'am, I, I believe the other sister service academies do follow the same position we are. Pre-COVID, uh, we required standardized tests, and we had for decades and decades and decades as one of the important objective measures that we would like to have to consider a candidate's record in competition with others that apply. When COVID hit, we quickly realized that many, many students around the country's ability to take the test, to find a testing facility were limited because of things that were closed down, very limited availability. And so we, like probably every other institution of higher education in the country, we moved into what we call at the Naval Academy test flexible. We still desired to have standardized tests as part of an applicant's uh, record. They're a very good, as you state, they're a very good indicator of, of success at the Naval Academy, especially in the first two years where they take a series of classes in calculus and calculus-based physics. But when we realize that we might have to not miss talent that's applying from states where they could not take the test, we adopted the test flexible option. It's approximately, there's approximately today present at the academy, we have a little bit less than 3% of our midshipmen across three classes right now still attending that did not submit SATs, they didn't take them or they did not submit them and we admitted them. We're currently conducting some analysis to see how they're doing. We're not complete with that work yet and when we conclude that analysis, that's when we're going to begin to determine whether standardized testing should still be an objective measure that we demand or whether we move away from it. But that jury is still out, ma'am, because these students are still progressing through those calculus classes and calculus-based physics. And Admiral, you are aware of the language in the NDAA on this issue of requiring standardized tests for all military academies, are you not? As I understand it, ma'am, uh, in the NDAA, as it's drafted, there is language for that. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. With unanimous support that will require all of our service academies. So we believe it's important to have a fact-based, fair, and equal opportunity to succeed at our uh, academies and make sure that we are identifying the absolute best and brightest talent nationwide. Um, so thankfully, I led that amendment in this year's NDAA alongside Senator Tom Cotton. That will require all of our service academies to consider standardized test scores in their applications. But it's not just the Naval Academy uh, that has problems in the admissions process, because I do think we all know we're in a post-COVID time. We should return to requiring standardized tests. But also, a RAND study done at the Air Force Academy clearly showed that the Academy's selection panel score was working in the opposite way as intended. And according to the study, the relationship between the selection panel score and academic success was significant, but in the wrong direction. Higher selection panel scores were associated with a much lower likelihood of academic success at the Air Force Academy. Uh, what is your comment on that, Lieutenant General Clark? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we are very diligent about creating an academic composition for every one of our applicants to ensure success at the Air Force Academy. We hold to our, our, our weighted values that we look at for every cadet, and, and that gives us an indication as to whether or not they're going to succeed. But we also look at the whole person. We look at every aspect of them, their uh, their background, their life experience, their socioeconomic status. It, it is a whole person concept because we are a, a factory to develop leaders of character and we want to know that an uh, incoming cadet has a propensity to be that leader of character. So there are indicators that help us determine that as well. And uh, it's both the academic composition and that whole person concept that allow us to pick the right people to go out and lead our Air Force and Space Force. But it is troubling that the selection panel score is correlated with lower academic success at the academy. Would you agree? 
Well, I, I'm not uh, sure that that is actually the case. We have our cadets come in with the highest academic comps. And, I would refer and you to the RAND study. I yield back.